All right, good afternoon everyone and a very warm welcome to all of you to AHS Chat with the Principal as part of our AHS Open House uh, Program 2021. I am Miss Norif Arifin and uh, a senior teacher in Anglican High School, but today I will be your host. And as a senior teacher in Anglican High School, I have the privilege to work alongside uh, a very passionate uh, group of people. And you know, our de dedicated uh, school leaders as well as our staff to nurture our students to be honourable leaders. So with me here, I have Mr. Ku, our school principal, as well as Mr. Yao, one of our HODs. We also have Kelly Tay, and we are all here to share with you about our beloved school, about our culture, our experiences, as well as answer some of the questions that you have posed. Before we go on, uh, let me invite them to introduce themselves. Hi parents and hi uh, primary school graduates, I'm Mr. Ku. Let me first congratulate you that you know you have crossed over a very important milestone and ready for the next um, journey in your education. You know, we celebrate what we value. I trust that you have celebrated the growth of your child parents and you know, enough of the celebration and now finally the time to make decision of what school to choose. So I welcome you to do that. Let me just very quickly say a little bit about our school also. That's something that I really think that's, uh, that you, you ought to hear at the start, which is that we, we focus on growing the whole child. So there's such a thing called CHAMPS, C-H-A-M-P-S. Uh, in Chinese, we call the zi ti qing mi mei ling, which means to say uh, C for cognitive, the, the thinking part, H for leadership, headship, that's called leadership part, and then A for aesthetic, M for moral, uh, P for physical, and S for social. And that's the whole person that we want to grow in. And I want to say that, you know, when you are here, there's really the no best school, but a best match. And so I invite you as you spend the next hour with us to know about our values, our culture, and see whether it match what you want your child to have for the next four years. Hi, hey, hello. hello. Afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Mr. Yao. I... I'm an ex-student from the school, graduated in 1994. Currently, I'm back to my alma mater to teach. So I'm a teacher here. And my kids are here as well. So I'm a parent of Anglican High School as well. I'm truly a product. Uh, finish, not finish it. So I'm going product of AHS. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly. Mm. 大家好,我是来自三F班的郑凯丽,也是第54届的学生会主席,那我非常期待还有兴奋和大家分享我这三年来在圣中的点点滴滴, and I hope to be, and I will be your senior soon to be. Yeah. Alright, thank you everyone. And I really want to take this opportunity to appreciate and thank uh, parents and students out there for uh, raising your questions uh, through our uh, AHS Open House site. And uh, our team has taken the liberty to cluster the question into four broad themes, namely our distinctive culture, our signature programs, as well as uh, use of technology in school and student leadership. So uh, without further ado, uh, we will move on to the first segment. Um, I think as parents and students are discussing about which secondary school uh, they should go or choose to go to, many wonder about school culture and whether our school culture is suitable for them. So I have a question here uh, from Miss Tan, uh, whose child is studying at uh, or used to study at Konghua School. Uh, the question is, what is unique about AHS? And maybe Mr. Yao or Mr. Ku can help me with this question and also share with us uh, the focus of AHS. Okay. Yeah, thanks, um, Ms. Norib, and thank Ms. Tan for your questions. I think very important questions, right, which we want to find out about the school culture and, and the uniqueness about the school. And, and let me just take some time to share about what our school is about. Um, one, I think we are, we, we are an amalgamation of two important traditions, heritage. One, we are SAP school. So you will imagine we emphasize a lot of the whole ethos of a SAP school. But at the same time, we are a mission school where emphasis of holistic growth is there. And that's why you hear just now at the start, I talk about the CHAMPS, which is really the whole facet of growth that we want to achieve for our students. And very often we say to our students, which means actually, uh, how do you grow as a person? How do you anchor yourself to values, characters, and relate to other people in a way that's respectful? So, so that part of Xue is, is is being spoken, is being uh, 
talk about very often and we want our students to be of that. And at the same time, I think we also want to help them to grow. And so one unique thing about our school is the CCA. The CCA is really the DNA of the school and students hold a lot of pride in it. In fact, CCA is in the blood of our students. And you do a blood test, um, the group is not O, not A, not A, B or B, but it's CCA. Now what does that mean when you say that? Okay, let me tell you more. But before that, you must remember some numbers related to CCA. 22, 22, 7, 7, 4, 4. What does that mean? There are 22 CCA in our school. That's a lot actually of choices for you to choose for the next four years. Um, seven performing arts, um, seven uniform group, four sports and four clubs and society. So we have, for example, for uniform group, we have NCC. If you like to don on the green uniform, prepare yourself for national service, for example. Uh, and they do wonderful uh, precision drill. We means they throw the their rifle up in the air and do something that I can't do. Um, and they are very good in that. So then the boy brigades, uh, girls guys, uh, St. John's Brigade. These are some of the uniform groups. They are doing very well. And we are performing arts, Chinese drama, um, English drama, and various, and all of them perform well again in SYF. Then we have our sports, well known, because AHS is well known for our sports and, and clubs and society. In fact, more than 95% of our students get A1 or A2 for CCA, and that is really a feat. Now, so how do we do that? Well, the reason is this. Our students' blood type is CCA. What does that mean? We empower our students opportunity to exercise their leadership. And so they take ownership, the senior, the SEC 3, for example, guide the SEC 2 and prepare them to be future leaders. And at the same time, they pass on the tra important tradition, culture of their CC, and that's sustain itself. Of course, credit must go for the teachers who guide them, the coaches, but students are really the blood, the driving force of our CCA. And through that, we raise them as leader. And the other thing we actually have is that all students are part of the National Youth Achievement Award. What does it mean? It means actually growing them in a, as a whole person and where they learn about uh, new skills, they explore the outdoor, and at the same time, they also serve the community. And these are all the things that really to do that. In one practical way, it builds the CV of them also as they you know, uh, apply for future scholarships or, or admission to some uh, university or even JCs. Yeah. Maybe Mr. Yang, you want yeah. to share with us your experience as a student yes. when you were a student in Anglican High. Yes. Yes, indeed, uh, our school has a very vibrant uh, CCA culture. Okay, when I was a student, uh, we loved coming to school uh, every day because there are just so many things for us to explore and uh, try out. Right? So the school uh, truly believes in holistic education and gives us a lot of opportunities to explore different interests, different passions that maybe on our own we may not have the time or opportunity to uh, discover. So we have things like uh, inter-class singing competition where every class is put up uh, a song item and that's where we discover many karaoke kings and queens uh, in our classes and they are not from the choir, right? And where we, have, uh, we play sports every day, uh, almost the daily after school. Uh, we, we just play different types of games uh, each day, soccer, <laughs> we play basketball, uh, 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 anywhere you can find a soccer in the basketball court or street soccer, or, or just anything that, that, uh, uh, that we can try. So, um, we enjoy coming to school a lot, and uh, we look forward uh, every day to come to school. And because the school gives us a very safe and very caring environment uh, for us to be in. And I think when we talk about caring and safe environment, I think uh, there is this question uh, posted by a parent uh, from Taunan School, Miss Lo. Uh, I think when we talk about academic rigour as well as uh, CCA commitment, the question is about uh, how do our school actually help our students to manage uh, both commitments? Mm. Yeah. Okay, so yes, our school truly believes that students that come to Anglican High School will be able to balance both the academic and the non-academic uh, areas. When I was, again, uh, back to uh, some stories in the past, our principal at the time, Mr. Moo, always says, a uh, 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 student at Anglican High School will be able to balance both because you are able to 
uh, use your talents in studying, your resilience, when you're in the same thing in playing sports. So same, if you're a sports player, you'll be able to uh, apply the, the skills you learn, the resilience, the, the perseverance in your studies as well. So you always believe that we are able to uh, uh, balance both Wen Wu Shuang Quan at the time. So, so it, uh, in our school, truly we believe in developing honourable leaders and we hope to nurture in our students the sense of confidence to overcome uh, challenges that may come uh, along the way. But most importantly, uh, we have a family culture in AHS where we have uh, teachers who care, peers who care for one another, as well as the church pastoral staff uh, that are here to provide support uh, to the students. Okay, so uh, we have, uh, when you first come into the school, right, you will have your orientation, uh, group leaders, your OGLs who are the leaders from the student council who will take care of you, make sure you are able to uh, 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 feed yourself into the surrounding here, uh, don't get lost and, and be able to get used uh, to life in AHS. And in your classes, we will have uh, peer support leaders who will be there to ensure that uh, everybody fits uh, in, everybody has some form of emotional support uh, in their class. So if there are issues that is beyond uh, what the, the PSLs can handle, they'll bring the issues up to the teachers or to the uh, school counsellors. Correct. So in our school, we have uh, full-time school counsellors who will be able to provide the support and the church also provides a chillax place for students to go there to chill but as well as if you need some more people to talk to, uh, to find some small uh, emotional support, uh, we have uh, these people, they are all in school and they are all part of this uh, AHS family. In terms of academic support, we have very skillful teachers. Later, Mr. Ku will share more about our curriculum. Uh, but for students who need more academic uh, support, we do have uh, LSP, Learning Support Program, for students after school. But more importantly, we uh, a lot of students look for teachers for one-to-one -one consultation, right? So they will uh, uh, find them after school and we have a lot of study benches around in the school uh, to, for, for students to arrange consultation time with the teachers. And these study benches are also used for one more unique uh, part of our school called STINT, S-T-I-N-T, which is Student-Teacher Interaction Time. So as long as you are here in our school, your form teachers will uh, have STINT with you uh, regularly to find out more about you, not just about life in school, but also what is happening to you outside of school. Are you coping? How is your family like? And so on and so forth. So indeed, we have a, a very strong uh, family culture here, which I experienced when I was a student, and that made me want to come back and to pass on this tradition as well. Right. Thanks, Mr. Yao. How about Kelly? Yes, I think I can definitely agree to what Mr. Yao mentioned. Like, uh, AHS really do have a very supportive environment as well as a conducive one for our learning as well as uh, growth on our mentality. So, as the Student Council representative, we do organise uh, town hall meetings frequently for our juniors as well as uh, our own batchmates. And it actually acts as a platform for students to voice out their feedbacks or some of their opinions about the current school facilities or services that they think uh, there might be more improvements on. And they reflect these opinions to a panel that consists of various key personnel like uh, Mr. Ku and Mr. Yao here. And um, we really do believe and we aim that uh, everyone's voices can be heard and respected. And other than the town hall meetings that we hold, we also do organise frequent bonding events in the class context. And we really hope to encourage students to bond within their classes and to forge a close-knit friendships within their class context. Because we believe that um, when you feel stressed, the first people you usually approach is definitely their friends. Mm -hmm. And so we really hope to create a comfortable environment in the class. And other than that, we also do have the peer support leader system that Mr. Yao mentioned earlier. And they are actually specially trained and have undergone trainings to learn how to uh, help students to distress them. And they also do have initiatives like setting up the care boxes in class. And they have some snacks or amenities that students can just like grab freely because they feel that it can help them to relieve the stress. And actually, other than support on the mentality, we also do have many physical 
facilities that will help us to have a more conducive environment here at AHS. So one example is that my favourite spot is the cafe, where I can usually uh, just rest over there and chill with my friends. And um, definitely, we also have like many benches around the school, like the ones outside the pond just um, nearby the general office area. Yeah, so um, we do have many places like that that provides a space for us to um, just have a private time with our friends. Yeah. Yeah, and I think when we talk about uh, developing a child, raising a child, we need a whole village to support that. So apart from the teachers, friends, I think a very important group of people would be our parents. So maybe Mr. Ku can share with us how the school actually engage and support parents as well. Yeah, sure. And, and I, I really, I think more of us will agree with Ms. Norris say that it takes a village to raise a child and that is something we take it. So we have the teachers who are the front line from the form teachers all the way to our life coaches and, uh, and church being an extra uh, additional support they're giving to the students. Then the students are giving support to each other, not just the peer support, but the whole culture of care. And of course, with the physical environment, right? Uh, in fact, there are two therapists that will come and greet you if you sit beside uh, the benches, beside the, the pond. They are the permanent residents. Uh, but parents, you are key to us. You are our teammates. You are our, on the same team together. And that's really important. And so I really treasure that partnership. Beside our usual of the meet the parents conversation that we have at the start of the year, uh, through the years, we will have uh, breakfast with parents and uh, through the eating and talking together, hear your feedback. You also get to hear what schools are doing and that's one thing. Of course, form teachers is another line that work with you and a year ahead, uh, making close contact with the parents. Uh, our parents' support groups are super enthusiastic. Uh, they will organize events, not just for the bonding, but also uh, bringing experts come in for parenting talks and equipping you. And the other beauty of parents support group, of course, is that they are one or two steps ahead of you they are able to share with you how is the transition like for a P6 into SEC1, for example. Some of the things they wonder, why is it practiced this way? They are able to assure you some of the tips to do that. And this is what we do, a whole village working together. But at the end, really, we want our students to be very resilient so that they can be change maker in the future. They are able to take all the changes at them and do that. And, and you and all of us together uh, do that for our, our students. In fact, if I may add, there's another group of people, our alumni. We do have yes. strong support from our alumni who came back, uh, you know, after uh, graduating to serve as teachers. Uh, we also have alumni who are active in our alumni association like Mr. Wee. And what do they do? Um, for some of them, they come uh, to school, uh, they provide uh, career guidance, or for some of them, they, uh, they will talk to our students and become their motivators, uh, you know, to provide uh, the encouragement to our students. Um, Mr. Yao, you think so? Yes, indeed. Yeah, I vouch for that. Because I'm personally an example <laughs> of somebody who uh, wants to contribute uh, to the school after I graduate. And indeed, uh, 我们其实有很多的校友都很非常的怀念, uh, 在生中, uh, 的日子, 也对老师, 对我们的教导, 牢记在心, uh, 其实, 感恩, right, and really in EHS, uh, we pride ourselves to be a school uh, in a garden on a hill. Mm. Yeah, and so for many of you who are joining us uh, next year, you will be greeted by this uh, lush greeneries uh, for you to relax and enjoy. Uh, and that's why I think many of our seniors also uh, came back, or our graduates actually, they came back to take uh, bridal video. Uh, yeah, uh, video photos. Uh, I think I just saw one this morning. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, and uh, so it's something that you can enjoy when you join us next year. Uh, all right, I think we will move on to the next segment where we talk uh, a bit about the school signature program. And, uh, you know, I think there's a question Oh, okay. There's a question about uh, whether Anglican high school, whether it's compulsory for students to offer higher Chinese uh, in Anglican high. And I think I can answer that. Uh, for AHS students, uh, you must offer Chinese language, uh, but it's not compulsory to offer Chinese, higher Chinese at all levels. Am I right, Kelly? 
Yes, in <laughs> fact, um, actually when I was in SEC 1, I took the Chinese language. But at the end of the year, the school actually offered me to take higher Chinese for the SEC 2 course. And after I upgraded to the higher Chinese course, I definitely find that you need to put in more effort and a bit more uh, focus to deal with the subject. Because definitely like the in intensity uh, has grown. But I think with the help of our teachers and through booking some consultation slots with them, um, handling it wasn't as difficult as I thought. And I think it's definitely uh, nothing much to be stressed about. Right. Yeah. Thanks, Ken. Sorry, am I, am I, and in, I know, you know parents, I know sometimes you ask their questions or, or even students ask because you're wondering whether you can manage the learning of Chinese or higher Chinese. I want to say that beside the formal classroom, being an SAP school, we have one advantage. We have the appreciation of Chinese culture, which is another uh, additional avenue to learn Chinese through appreciation of culture. So that's another way that we actually strengthen students, which I think Kelly have experienced that. So it's pretty interesting. You talk about, for example, lo local food, about how the Chinese migrant came and then they set their society. It's, it's fun, actually. I've been to the classes. And, and the other thing, of course, the larger environment that we create, so that the learning of Chinese become easy. So I want to assure those students or parents you are wondering, but it's go beyond just normal classroom because of the advantage of the SAP school. Right, and I think uh, we have our tea room, right? Yeah. Currently yeah. refurbished uh, so to, to serve the purpose of uh, engaging our students in the Chinese culture in a very uh, comfortable and relaxed way as well. Yeah, actually, Mr. Ku, there is a question from uh, Kimberly from uh, Red Swastika. And uh, I think which the question is something that I think other people will be curious about uh, uh, with regards to our program or the curriculum uh, in Anglican High. So I think she's asking about what is the curriculum like in Anglican High and what are some of the subjects that we offer in school? Oh, thanks. Okay, thanks, Kimberly. That, that I'm sure you're not the only one. Many will ask about what about the curriculum after it formed one of the largest type a chunk of time in the school, right? Okay, so let me uh, share with you the three very important ingredients that make our curriculum unique and, and in, one day, in one way very distinctive. But let's, before I talk about the three ingredients, uh, just move a little bit to the end product. You know, we, we always say, let's start with the end in mind. So I can just share with you that through that at the end of four years of journey, I want to really credit my teachers because um, that we are always able to hit almost 100% of students able to go to JCs. In fact, uh, one in every two students will be able to go to the top five JC, the choices of them. They are able to choose the choices of their JC. And that's something that I want to say teachers have worked very hard to that. But I want to share a bit more. And we are quite mindful of that because of this, right? And also knowing that our students actually are the top 15% of the the primary six cohort, we want to really make sure we do our best for our students. So besides being able to value add our students in terms of their O level, that means to say when they come in, they are supposed to achieve this, but we are able to do more than expected. Uh, we do it by first really a very structured way of preparing you. So the lessons are well designed, teachers work in groups, they spend time improving, innovating their teaching methods, the curriculum, to, to help you to do that. Then you hear Mr. Yao just talk about learning support. So we also know that there are some students who need more support and there's a learning support for you to, to help you to catch up in your study. That's one thing, the process. The second is really we look to the future. We say that our students, because of the top 15%, we actually believe that you will be future leader of Singapore. So we need to provide you with skills that's important that will last beyond secondary school. And so one of the things we look at is called critical thinking. And so we went to US and look at this model called Paul Elders. We said, who is that? Never mind. <laughs> but you can Google. You want to find out more. We adopt it and it becomes what we call critical Anglican critical thinking skill. X, A-C-T-S. So with this critical thinking, you're able to look at issues, look at it, analyze it, and understand it. And we want to teach students to be fair-minded when they look at issues. And that's really very important for us. And there is an effect of that because the O-level syllabus actually require people to think and able to think critically. So by providing that, we actually equip our students to do that. But that's not good enough for us because you are, those who come to us will be future leaders. 
So we want to pre provide skills to go for that. And so is what we did. We have what we call experience, ACT experience. What is that? All secondary students will go through that. In fact, we just introduced it quite recently. Um, so there is a subject that all secondary students need to study. It's called social studies. And in social studies, there's an issue investigation. And what we're trying to do in issue investigation is this, that when you look at it, they apply X, the technical thinking, critical thinking skills into it. And very excited, I mean, it's very exciting because we have Ms. Do Yening, the Minister of State, to come and start the whole process of, of giving a dialogue to students to look at big issues. And then students will look at real issues and solve it. And this is exciting. But when they solve it, they, we actually invite professors from Singapore University of Technology and Design to come and look at it and critique it and give suggestions. And so students feel really a lot of pride, you know, having professors to come and look at my project and comment on it. And, um, and that is really one of the things. But we also know that critical thinking is not enough. You need to help students to innovate, right? And so we brought in design thinking. And design thinking is another very important uh, skills that we want the students have so that they will empathize with the people they want to help. At the same time, innovate to its solutions. And so um, we actually innovate our curriculum, the food and consumer education and the design and technical study. We actually convert or make it into what we call I-score. What does I-score stand for? Uh, innovative thinker, um, self-directed learner, collaborative researcher. So they look at issues and look at real problem and solve it. And, and very excitingly is that we infuse what we call Kickstarter, which means to say they need to promote the idea in a very convincing and confidently. And so they actually use multimedia, sell their ideas, and uh, we all get to vote actually for those things. So it's, it's pretty fun. So, so, so first, we have a very structured way in terms of academic. Two, we look long term and give skill sets that students need. And the third thing, my teachers, because our teachers are really experienced, competent, engaged. They actually work in teams together to do this. And so teachers not only work in team to do well in classroom, but outside classroom. So you hear Mr. Ya about self-directed uh, 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 learning support. At the same time, uh, even provide one-to-one -one consultation. Yeah, so those are the, the things. So I hope I have answered your question, Kimberly. And uh, maybe we add a student's uh, perspective to it. Uh, yeah. okay. Maybe uh, Kelly can share a little bit more about her experience as uh, one of our students in our Chinese language elective program. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Norib. And I definitely agree to what Mr. Ku mentioned. Uh, and I myself actually benefited from a buffet and a wide variety of the subjects being offered here, which caters to a student's individual interests as well as their academic strength. And please do allow me to elaborate in Chinese. So, actually,我本身来到圣中之前就对华文华语有一定的兴趣。那我是在从邻居那里听说,其实圣中有开放这个华文语特课程过后,才更加下定决心要来圣中就读。那而且据我所知全新加坡两百多所的中学里只有九所有开放这个语特课程所以圣中作为其中一所其实是在这个方面比较权威的吧那我觉得呢通过我自己的一些经验我可以分享到其实这个语特课程呢它让我有一个机会
呃方面，也是让我们呃有更多学习华门的平台。而且呢，嗯、呃，这些其实。也都让我们呃有了更多接触华文的机会，所以我希望线上的小陆生会对此感兴趣。Thanks, Kelly, and I think really for many of our students, these are all memorable and enriching moments for them. And for myself also, you know, Mr. Ko was talking about experience as a social studies teacher. I could see, you know, how my students develop into problem solvers as well as effective communicator uh, at the end by the end of the semester long. Um, Program, and uh, I think for some of you who still have questions and you would like to speak to our teachers, uh, there will be a chat with the teacher session after this uh, talk, uh, where you can find out a little bit more about our bicultural as well as the CLEP program, our talent development program, our design think design and critical thinking program, as well as our creatives program. So uh, you can go back to the uh, micro site and you will get the links to the chat with the teachers. Right, I think um, moving forward, uh, we have two last questions with regards to our program in school. Uh, the two questions, uh, number one, are there scholarships available in Anglican High? And uh, the second one, uh, would, are there any uh, overseas trips or camps in school? Okay, uh, um, well, there, there, is a, there is a scholarship. It's an AHS uh, Management Board Scholarship. Uh, it's a, it's, there's a certain amount, quite generous amount, I must say, that's given to those who are actually a scholar, but I only let those who come into the school know. <laughs> but once you got a mix in the school, then you will be invited into the program for those who are at the tops of the cohort, and you'll be invited. But it's not just about the scholarship, it's not about being a scholar, it's about being given the opportunity to grow, to stretch your potential. So we, we put in many different programs, actually, and exposure, to expose them not just about thinking but leadership and beyond that. So one example, for example, actually is to uh, follow grassroots leader and uh, meet the uh, MP sessions just to understand issues and how problems are being solved. And so those are this exposure that we want our students to have. But beyond the scholarship is actually our talents given that we are proud of. We recognize that all students come in with talents and we want to grow their talents. So like Kelly, you know, is uh, talented in Chinese and we are very thankful for her. And, and so we provide many opportunities for her to grow. Beside the equipping, it's really to use those skill set in different platforms. And that really, you know, grow the whole confidence. So besides Chinese, we have English, literature, the humanities and the sciences also. And they take part in, in various uh, programs from, for example, Singapore Science and Engineering Fair, and they have a chance to present their things and work with researchers. So, so, so everyone, every student, we want to give them the opportunity to grow their talents. Beyond the academy, of course, also with the right, CCA. Th that's also where they see the transference of knowledge to applying the knowledge exactly. in the different scenarios. Yes, exactly. And, and, and when you have that kind of, of beyond school experience, it actually brings out your confidence and hopefully allow a student to consider career options in their future. Okay, so uh, the, the other question was on uh, overseas. That's right. You see, the word <laughs> have not been spoken for so long. I almost forgot. You know, we all miss our overseas trips, yeah. right? It's like two years and uh, counting. We have less. Okay, we have overseas trips, definitely. Uh, one of the trademarks is actually we do have a China immersion. And, and, and being an SAP school, we, we want to, just like I mentioned, right, put, providing holistic experience of learning of Chinese language and culture. But I also want to say that we are very, in one sense, looking forward and say, how about helping our students to understand Chinese language being applied in a, in a, in a future world. So technology actually went into our whole China immersion trip. So I, I, um, in 2019, for example, we partnered with a school that is found in Suzhou Industrial Park that specialize in nanotechnology. So there's a nanotechnology firm that actually worked with the school to develop a program. In fact, I let I went with the students. I have a picture to show. I made me ask my colleague to show you. So we, we went to this school. Uh, it's, it's beside nanotechnology, a lot of technology education went to it. So I'm with a student standing in front of a, a AI robots having conversation about asking how am I and responding to our conversation. And of course, 
um, we also gather together because it's a nice photo taking session. But but anyway, it was really fun. Our students really enjoyed. So so that's what we do. So we try to in, in, infuse STEM, uh, uh, that means science, technology, engineering, and math into even our China immersion. But the other thing we also have is the Australian connection, which is also all time popular. So what we do is that actually students buddy with friends over there, but they don't just talk about um, uh, culture, what you like, you know, what's cool and not cool. But actually, they also talk about future pro problems. And so they use critical thinking to solve problems of the future. And that's really exciting. It's actually helped our students and, and our Australian counterpart to grow and learn together. Then, of course, we have others. I, I, later, uh, maybe Mr. Yao may share about uh, something about overseas VIA that will be interesting. Um, I think this year, our students also didn't get to go to Australia physically, but uh, Kelly, I think you were saying that some of your friends went through the experience yes. online? Yes, they did. Uh, not only my batchmates, but uh, basically the upper sex students do get a chance uh, to be selected to go on overseas trip where they get to uh, immerse themselves in the Western or the Asian culture and they get to collaborate with their peers to work on problem-solving projects and I do believe that it allows them to broaden their perspectives and also to find more creative ways to tackle with problems that we may not have observed in our daily lives. So I really do think that these opportunities are really prestigious. Right. So this is um, Australian Connection. Mr Yao, maybe a VIA uh, camps or uh, trips? Yes, we do have. Uh, we have a long-standing partnership with this uh, village in Chiang Rai, northern part of Thailand. Uh, so, we selected the students and we'll have uh, chats with the, the village uh, uh, representatives to find out what they need uh, for that year, whether it's some basic construction, uh, whether it's uh, teaching of uh, English and art or uh, having conversational uh, English lessons with the youths uh, there. So we find out what their needs and our students will try to uh, uh, meet the needs uh, for that year. So we make preparations before we uh, make the trip uh, to the village. Um, so not just us contributing to the communities there, but we also uh, get our students to step out of the comfort zone to uh, meet the needs and also to uh, learn about the culture that is there. So we do have some photos uh, of what we did there. So about road paving, that was one of the uh, work that we did there, and uh, mural painting. And because it's a long-standing uh, partnership, is is we don't do those once-off projects that you layer with travel agencies that will bring you to some place you pay money to dig a well. No, so it's a long-standing partnership uh, over there. So we remember my first year I was there. We we just paved this. Uh, uh, cement road from the village to the to just uh, uh, another house. Then the next year we went from the house we bring it to another house. Then the next year we see some other schools who also have partnership with them, so they also went. And finally, I think about my fifth or sixth year, I think we finally reached the main road. Yeah, so we brought some some at least uh, some convenience uh, to them. We try to uh, meet their needs, and it was an eye-opening experience for for our students to be able to see that the world is bigger than themselves in Singapore, and that there are a lot of people out there who they can uh, meet their needs as well as learn from them uh, at the same time. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Yao. And really, I think for most of you out there, if this is uh, you know, the, some of the over overseas experiences that you like to go through, do join us in AHS. Right, and let's move on to the next segment. Uh, I think one of the major uh, development all schools have to face uh, this, uh, this year uh, was the introduction of the Personal Learning Device Program. And uh, at AHS, uh, we have also refined our teaching practices to leverage on the affordances of technology. Um, maybe I'll get Kelly now to share with us uh, how has it changed the way uh, you learn, you know, with your personal learning device. Sure. So this uh, uh, it was actually an especially exciting year for my peers and I because we received our personal learning devices, which uh, PLDs in short. And basically, 
uh, we applied them into our lessons from Term 2 onwards, where we got a chance to work with more uh, interactive platforms like Pear Deck or Nearport, and our teachers would just conduct lessons on these platforms. So for myself, I do remember that I had a geography lesson that my teacher put in uh, rich resources that sourced from online articles or YouTube videos and have placed it in the platform for us students to view it as well as to provide some feedbacks that we have uh, live. So I do feel that these kind of platforms uh, helps and it really uh, engages the students like myself. Uh, and I do find them um, really more meaningful than the ordinary lessons on the whiteboard and or just like pens and papers. And um, these kind of chances are also uh, really special to us because usually uh, back in the old days or like during my primary school times, I didn't really had uh, much experiences with the laptops or the Chromebooks or the iPads and I had to make a special trip to the computer labs. But uh, now that I have the PLDs, it's definitely more convenient for my learning and it also, um, I guess, promotes a self-directed learning for myself too. Right. Thanks, Kelly. It's heartening to hear, you know, as a teacher, that you know the lessons that have been we have uh, prepared for the students are really effective. And I think, uh, with regards to feedback, also it becomes ongoing and uh, active, like immediate. Yeah, and I think uh, this also reflects the hard work of. Us teachers, <laughs> right? And um, I think you know, for for many of us, uh, all the teachers here, we put us, uh, we really put in effort to update ourselves with the latest e-pedagogical skills. Uh, maybe Mr. Ku uh, can share a bit ab about the effort of the school, you know, on the effort of the schools to the school to train our teachers. Yes, thank, thanks, me, Nori. I, I must credit my teachers for that. But but let me just first talk about actually our journey started earlier than what. Uh, MOE was planning. So in 2018, we actually piloted one class of one-to-one -one, uh, computing. And from there, we learned quite a lot of lessons from that. I must say the teachers then was very gung-ho and say, let's try. And they went on to it. And that's really a typical of our AHS teacher, ready to try new things and innovate. And so they went in to try. And then from that experience, actually, we gained quite a bit. So last year, even with the home-based learning, it wasn't difficult for our teachers because by then, a lot of skill sets were there. And and uh, students were not strange to it because already they were exposed to that. And so when MOE asked about ready to go, we say, yes, we are ready. And, and, and credit to my teachers because we form a task force to look into e-pedagogy, which is actually a planning of lessons using technology to support, not for the set of technology, but using technology to support. And that's what you hear about what Kelly has said and all these things. And really credit to all teachers. We make it so... Uh, meaningful and that students actually benefit from it. Uh, beyond that, it is one of the reasons why we go into this is because we believe students must have the digital literacy to be future leader. And that is why we are doing something like that. They expose themselves so that they can be using technology to solve future problems. Um, so teachers use SLS, for example, for students to work so that they can also be self-directed learner learning at their own pace, at their own time setting, go for that. And these are some of the things that, in fact, what is exciting is this, in 2023, we will have our first class of O-level computing. And that's how we are increasing our capacity, actually to prepare students to, to be really using technology to solve problems. And so so uh, you guys who are coming in, you will have a chance of actually doing that in, in uh, upper sec for computing O-level, actually. Yeah. Right, and Mr. Ku, talking about the affordances of technology, in fact, this year, our blended learning as well, uh, blended learning weeks, uh, we, we do things differently as well. Maybe I think we, I'll get Mr. Yao to yeah, share. Yeah. Yes, correct. So for blended uh, learning week this year, we uh, have two purposes. Number one, of course, to maximize uh, the, the leverage of technology for students' learning. But we also want to uh, give time uh, and space for students to learn uh, what they're interested in that in a normal uh, study uh, uh, curriculum time, they're not unable to learn. So you came up with this uh, self-initiated uh, learning uh, days where uh, students are free to learn uh, what they want to for that day. Of course, for students who say that they don't know what to learn, we offer some uh, structure 
uh, suggested activities uh, for them. Uh, but for most of them, they, if they want to learn on their own, we give them the space. So we have things like people, they, they, they go on, uh, online to search for uh, GIF makers, uh, for how to make a 3D uh, printing, uh, and also about uh, cooking, correct? making uh, different multiple ways of using the eggs to make different uh, dishes. And they learn uh, online through watching videos and so on, and they try it on their own. So this uh, 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 gives them the space uh, and time to pursue uh, their passions and uh, interests. Uh, so what teachers need to do is just to monitor their reflection uh, to make sure that they have uh, used the time uh, effectively. So for our SEC2 students, they, during the blended week, they also attended uh, workshops that were conducted by their SEC3 uh, CCA leaders on uh, leadership attributes, uh, on project management skills, uh, and they did it uh, online. So they have Zoom sessions with their CCA leaders and they discuss uh, things on how to improve their CCA moving forward once uh, they're able to meet uh, physically. And for our sectaries, uh, traditionally we do have a career guidance fair for them where we invited, invite professionals to come and share uh, with them. This profession usually our alumni, our parents, uh, and to, to share the expertise with them, but because of uh, COVID restrictions, this year we bring it online uh, as well, correct? So the students will choose which profession that they want to find out more about, and we form breakout rooms. They will have a chat with the uh, professionals uh, to find out more uh, about this. So, so even if with this uh, uh, pandemic restrictions, we are still able to now maximize the use of technology, uh, to maximize the learning of the students beyond the curriculum. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Yao. Um, I think there's uh, one more uh, segment that we can move to, uh, which is also the last segment for today, uh, about student leadership uh, program. So uh, I think some, some uh, parents are asking you know, about our student leadership program, and maybe Mr. Kyu can share a little bit about our, our school leadership philosophy. Sure. Thank you. Um, you know, our vision is actually about every AHS student a leader. And then, so you will not be surprised, actually, we invest a lot of energy, thoughts into the whole leadership about students. And, and we focus, one of the things that we adopt, actually, is servant leadership. To, uh, what does servant leadership means actually? Well, it means this, be a steward of your leadership. That means using your leadership to bless other people, to serve others, to create values, to make things as meaningful for people. That's what it means by that. So there are attributes that go around, but we want them to really have a heart for the community and influence other people around them for good. So that's something that we, we want. So uh, example, for example, you lead honorably. What does that mean? Actually, it means that you honor values, you honor characters, you honor hard work, but more importantly, you honor other people, your teammates. So a leader is not someone to lord over people, but really to serve together with people. And that is something that we want to uh, do for to, together. Uh, the other thing, of course, is that as they go along, is if you realize that actually leadership in school is not a program, but a way of life, that we ask students this important question, which they will ask themselves, uh, what can I do for others? And when they think about that, then they take the initiative to do that. And that's leaders. That's really servant leadership. Yeah, I asked Kelly to elaborate more. She, she being, you know, the president of the student council, should will be able to say more about it. Yeah, sure. So I always knew that I wanted to do more than just doing good myself, but I also wanted to influence people around me to also do good for others and also to spread, uh, to spread the joy of blessing people around the community of AHS. So uh, when I was in the lower secondary, my senior in the student council uh, actually initiated this values in action uh, program and we made a trip to the Anglican Care Centre just nearby and we got a chance to interact with the seniors there uh, and we learned how to engage them in different ways and through that session uh, I really got to know that um, trying to create values for others and myself is really not easy, but it's definitely a really inspiring journey for everyone, especially for myself. And that kind of uh, inspired me to take up uh, more leadership positions and also encouraged me to approach uh, this opportunity to run for this student council president position in Sec 3. And ta-da, that basically led me to where I am today. Yeah. 
Thanks, Kelly. And I think for uh, our students and parents, if you are interested to find out more about our student leadership program, head on to our uh, AHS website. I think there are more information there. Right, we are almost coming to the end of the sharing, but um, I think a concern that many of our parents out there have uh, is about the newly introduced PSLE uh, scoring system and the implication uh, on them when they apply to Anglican High. Uh, of course, this one I'll have to get Mr. Koo to share with us a little bit or give more details. Okay, <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, you know, uh, parents want to say this. I, I probably can't elaborate in details within this short span of time, but we do have a FAQ that on our micro site that I encourage you to go and look at it. Uh, but very quickly, just let me say this: the the change to AL is to reduce stress for students. And but be, when when you have that, then of course, then you have a band of people of very similar AL score. For AHS, uh, based on our seven cohort, MOE has actually calculated and said, okay, this is what it means. Uh, we have a range of students came in. For set one with 5D, what does 5D mean? For it's not durian or whatever. No, 5D means AL of five. D means decision of higher Chinese, and then 12 to the range of 12 with a P. P means pass for higher Chinese. The reason being that is because we are SAP school. Uh, having higher Chinese provide an advantage in terms of that when you are have a type when there's a tie, it became an advantage with a distinction. Okay, that's one thing. But the other thing I need you to know is that. Uh, whenever there's a tie, as I say, there's a big band, uh, the order of your choice is important. And therefore, I want to encourage you that if you really, after listening to us, find that this is the match, then you need to put us as a first choice because that will help uh, in the event of a tie that having the advantage of coming to the school. So I so want to encourage you, uh, understand the school needs, uh, values, culture, and say, where do you want to place that order? Thanks, thanks, Mr. Ko. And I think uh, for now, it's my pleasure to invite uh, our panelists for their concluding advice to our potential P6 students as well as parents as they, as they move on to make their decision. Who wants to go first? Younger first, <laughs> right? Okay. okay. Then uh, I'll start off first. So hello to our P6ers here. And uh, I believe that maybe after listening to what we've shared earlier on, you may be a bit confused and maybe a bit overwhelmed as well. But I think you shouldn't worry too much because um, you can take it slowly and take one step at a time. And I think there's this old saying that goes by, Jing de guang, zhi de duo, but you might not heard of the next line, Xiang bo xue lai shen zhong. So as you can see on our t-shirt, we have wo ai shen zhong, Miss Norris, Mr. Ku, Mr. Yao, all have. But what I would like to say is, it's not just on our shirt, it's in our heart. Yeah, so I do hope that you get interested in AHS and opt this as a first choice. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Uh, okay, parents and future P6ers, uh, truly if you're uh, looking for a holistic education that develops you uh, holy, uh, holistically as a person, uh, come to AHS. You have skillful teachers, you have a caring principal, you, your child will grow to be a confident, happy uh, a student like Kelly who uh, is exposed to many opportunities for growth. You have alumni, seniors who truly care for you and pass on this tradition uh, of uh, a family culture here. Uh, choose AHS. Come here, you won't regret it. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Yao. I know, I just want to follow up, Mr. Yao. If you look at Mr. Yao, it's one of the very guarantee that we are offering very good education. Mr. Yao graduated and really loved the school, having receiving the care, the education, want to come back and contribute. And not only that, he has now more stake with the school because his own children are here, actually. And that really reinforced that kind of uh, belief. In fact, we have many parents who say, because my older child is here, I want my next one to come here. And that is something I am proud because it's teachers of the other who front it and face it and provide that care and all this. And I want to echo what Kelly also has said. Uh, let me try to... Jing de guang, zhi de duo, xiang bo xue. And really, we offer many, many experience here. And through that experience, you know more because like what Ms. Norris said, you know, it's not about just knowledge, applying the knowledge. And this is what we want to do. And parents, I want you to know this. The next four years is critical for your child. It's time where they form identity. I mean, psychology has told us that. It's time where they decide what values they want to carry with their life. It's time that they learn skills like leadership skills, social skills, learn to be resilient. And so when you choose a school, 
You've got to think about what is really the school offering, what the values of the schools are holding, what culture is provide so that your child can grow as a whole person, like what Mr. Yao said, holistically. And, and think about that. Because parents, you are our team, on the same team. We can't do it alone. So when I, you come and join us, you are going to be part of that team and I ask you to do that. For the P6, I know you make the decision and say, wow, there's so much to learn and know. So what to decide? Just imagine this. Okay, Kelly came in as a talent for Chinese. She is a gem to us. But actually, every student in our school is a gem. They are precious to us. Everyone that come into the gate as a student, we want to grow them as a person, as a champ, C-H-A-M-P-S, just how I mentioned. And we see you have talents. And so picture that at the end, you could be like Kelly, but you could be Yao, Mr. Yao, right? And all these are really examples of that. And so make that choice and decide. But most importantly, I want to wish all of you the best because at, whether you are here as a student or somewhere else, learn as much as you can, grow as much as you can. And so I want to wish parents as, and, and P6 uh, graduates all the best in your future endeavor. Back right. to you, Norik. Thank you, Mr. Yao, uh, Mr. Ku and Kelly. And uh, thank you, every one of you, for joining us on this talk. Uh, we have come to the end, uh, but uh, it doesn't stop here. If you do uh, want to speak to our students and our, par uh, our teachers, we have uh, the chat with students as well as teachers immediately after this session. You can go on to our microsite to get uh, the link and uh, you can join the session later on and on the same uh, on the same note uh, on the micro site you can also find videos to our ccas as well as uh, some of our programs uh, in school so you can view it at your own time uh, in your own home so congratulations once again peace success and parents and i wish you all the best take care and we'll see you again bye, bye.